so much to speak about, bit bit about DevOps, bit bit about uh, Puppet and Tyra and how they all, all the things mesh up together and how their sanity means me and that's all the So I work for NTDP Convergence, I manage their infrastructure and how NTDP Convergence is a wholly own subsidiary of NDTV. We take uh, there's supposed to be some slides here about the numbers of what we are doing, like the unique movies and the main views and all that stuff. But I don't think you are here for to get that. Uh, yeah, the traffic is growing each month. The mobile is sort of catching up to desktop users. And how we are organizing? We basically are a news media organization. So. So the content, the journalists, they take precedence over everything. So they come, they have control every every pixel and whatever they want. It's, 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 it's their site, it's their say, so it's their job on the line, most of all. So after that, there are the sales guys and the marketing guys, and then come the devs, and then come the operation guys, because this is what the high hierarchy is. It's, 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 it, it might be a little bit different than a typical IT shop or a software development shop. But we are very much into like we manage all of the stuff which TV doesn't go into. We manage internet. We take care of mobile, web, mobile value-added services, mobile apps, even into internet radio. We like that's all taken care of by us. Actually, the So I'm a sysadmin. So. No DevOps, I'm not a DevOps, whatever. I'm a sysadmin. So anybody else who is confident enough to call them, call themselves a sysadmin here. All what? Managers, programmers. So anybody who is into like a DevOps professional, like sort of so I have no arms about calling myself a sysadmin. I, I am a course sysadmin, and these guys might be my great great grandfathers. So I still have their genes in me. I am still. Uh, <laughs> but we sysadmins are very passionate about something. So we we are passionate about our uptimes. We are passionate about our servers. We like. Let's just show them that what we do. And, but things have changed, like cloud has changed a little bit. Cloud has put in a like, it's a DevOps sort of environment nowadays, so we would set it back to developer to do this. We'll sit behind Ramsey and we'll just migrate a site to a failover location and attempts. But a dev guy would be armed. He won't be like, going there barehanded. He will be armed with the latest metrics that he has. He will be armed with the, the whole infrastructure at his dis disposal. He will be armed with, he could be like, uh, deploy a new version. If there's a regression, he would be able to deploy a earlier version and do all that stuff. So, so they have all the tools and they and they feel very confident and they, and they are like, they can handle the bad guys. We have got sort of harm that or they might call us, they might say that they have sort of but still it, it, it's it's still a fight. It, 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 it is, it will be, but things are just sort of mainly together. Okay? Like, but what the fight has been and will be will be like this. Something like this. We have we still have there is somebody who is responsible for something. Now it's a collective thing, we call it DevOps. Dev people are also very much responsible. They also take ownership of the code that they have deployed to the servers and they live. And if a deployment goes through and within five minutes, there are a lot of errors coming in. So, so devs are, are the ones who know, okay, so whatever we push right now has created something. So, so they take responsibility and all that stuff. But still, there's, there, there is a sort of wall of confusion and all. There's people push stuff over the wall and we say what that is this and we push it back. But this will go on. 
this happens sometimes. But we have to work through it and we have our own egos and all that stuff there. Somebody has to take care of somebody. But all of it in the end comes out to root. I mean, cis admin are not all glued all the time. I don't know what, what the, the mind is like. I have to get glued, man. It won't work. So, so how many of developers have root access to your production service? Any developers here who have root access to the production service? Do you want root access to your production service? Nobody. Come on. <laughs> yeah. One guy. Good. But now it's all lovey dovey and uh, we are like so so DevOps is, is a much larger picture. It is much larger. It's not only developers and operation guys meeting together, it's also marketing guys having the latest analytical tools available to them, have the latest knowledge about what the site is performing like, the number of movies they are getting, the number of new logins they are getting, all that stuff is being like transparently given to them. So, so they are also involved. It's not like it has to be developers and operations also. It is the whole big company as well. So it all comes down to show me the money. So it all boils down to that. Because in the end that is what we all are here for. Work together, get the, the, get the things sorted out and, and uh, get the thing rolling up. The Phoenix Project. How many of you read this book? And, how, <laughs> and while reading this book, how were you able to associate people in that characters in the book with people in your organization? Yes. <laughs> and and have you like pushed the book to your boss or like, man, you got to, you should. <laughs> Please read this book and then after reading the book, pass it on to your boss. <coughs> Pop it. Anybody like this? Have, they, have you heard, heard about Puppet? Using Puppet? Yeah, using Puppet. Any other config manager, uh, config uh, requirement or ma management tool, chef, Ansible, using it in production? Nothing to manage. So Puppet is a config management tool of it really gets it really gets something and it it really makes the whole the drink bank thing work together. So I won't go into detail about Puppet that much like it's I <coughs> know it or not. Yes, Hira. Hira is something which couples very, very lightly and very easily with puppet. It, it can also sort of do it the same thing with chef. It, it, like it, it is not like it, it is hard coded into puppet. It's an independent uh, program on its own, and it couples very well, very well with puppet. Exactly, it is. It is a hierarchical-based key value lookup tool. <coughs> so, if, if you, if, so what do you mean by hierarchy? Hierarchy would be your infrastructure, your servers who have been clustered into a specific role, then your projects which have to be deployed on those servers. Your data centers A, data center B have different set of networks. So that is how you are layering your infrastructure. So this helps, this tool helps you in defining those hierarchy for your architecture. Why do you use it? Because it really makes Puppet better. So this, so the data which which usually we used to be putting in the puppet manifest or the puppet code that we call it, puppet manifest, uh, can now be put into Hera and puppet will just have to run, uh, is, uh, it fetches the data from uh, Hera and does its stuff.
Can you break this? So you have the multiple levels of overrides. Like you have a level of of a particular server, you want it to be a snowflake in the sense that it is unique in its own sense. You want something to be different on that server. You can do it with higher. So I'll show you some uh, examples of how how we are doing it. So Puppet has it, Puppet Forge, where the community puts it modules. Modules are, are those box which manage a particular stuff, like a module for Apache, a module for Nginx, a module for Tomcat. Maybe there's a module for WordPress, with, where we, you can call either Nginx or Apache or whatever to. So those are specific modules to do specific stuff. Even your, you can also publish your modules easily because you're not sending your specific uh, internal data with your module. So that those are totally different, different sets of uh, your code is and puppet and your data is in Hira. So what, what a Hira example of a Hira actually looks like. So we are into, uh, we are using AWS. So this a couple of you know, like if you are if you know about AWS, so these two like the basement availability zone would map would map to your regions. So are you like familiar with the AWS terminology? Like and instance type would be your different hardware uh, models, actual hardware, hardware with two uh, GB RAM, hardware with four GB RAM. So those would be different clubs. So, so this is the hierarchy.yml file. We start with the backends. Hierarch can have different backends. So it's a simple YAML backend. It can it, it can also be a JSON backend. You can have a couple of backends together, and so and it will look into it as from the top to top. So first we will it as a node. That's a directory in which so client set is a fact which is passed by a puppet. So client set will be unique back from Puppet of a particular instance that Puppet is managing. And so it can match to that. If it doesn't match to that, so there is a cluster where we just put the, all our clusters together. A group of servers which are doing the same job are the neighbor cluster. So the name of the cluster, then it will look into a availability zone, a data center. If it's this cluster's value for this data center is something. Or this cluster, if the if if, if we are like uh, uh, in scaling up or scaling down, we like scaling our servers vertically or horizontally. Also. Like you have some servers where we started off with a small server, bunch of servers, and then we scaled up and we are using a bigger servers now. For bigger servers, you might uh, need to have some processes or threads running much more than. Then they would want to be running in a smaller server. So, so we are really doing that differentiation. Then, actual cluster and the cluster, common stuff regarding a particular cluster. Then we come to our projects. Like projects are our work. Like we are going to deploy. Like a project for our profit side, a project for our uh, prime side, a project for our for the side. Those are being clubbed together as project. So those projects have their own deployed environment. Like so this project for a staging has to have this, 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 this project for production environment has to have this, this. So those are then plugged together. Then there's a common project, which are common for the particular project. So then a global file, which is like, so in the end we are just defining the data div here to fetch this all this file. So it is a flat data uh, directory, it's like file directory. So this is what uh, my directory looks like. There's a directory in which there's a file called hachak <laughs> So that www.ntdb is, is my uh, client server. Then there's a cluster. Cluster I have, I have named like two clusters or three clusters here. There's a hachak.yaml. There's a hachak which also have two different files for the instance type that I have. And then there's prime which, which all prime is in like uh, is like we have different values for some data centers. And then there's profit.fm which isn't uh, that needs to be that specified. So it, 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 all its data is coming to one file, so it will not differentiate. 
when there's a project. So we have a staging .yaml file which contains the staging setup for all the projects. We have the testing .yaml file, then we have the production .yaml, then there's a common .yaml, .yaml and then there's a global .yaml. Any questions like one particular snowflake server that we want something to be false. So this is the key and that's the value. So key is, so I talk about module, so the base module in which there's a monitor class in which there's a monit variable. So that's a key which it is which is in assigned to false value for that particular search. So it's matching. So it will only match if the club, if the public sentence third group of the jack one dot the battle to it. So this is for a C3 large. So here I'm defining a stack. So, so stack is a hash which has like FFM pools. So basically we are into uh, we have uh, PHP, so we are using PHP FPM. So we are defining different pools for our servers. So stack is a unique pool. It has its own sort of like you would recognize these variables, like what we are using. So for a C3 large, I'm having a lot of like max children would be higher for, for this, but because the server can take that much of load and can execute so many threads of FPM and run easily. So these are what I'm defining here. This is a jack.yaml file for a first person. So first, if see, if there's an instance of C3, it will fetch the values from stack values from there. But the rest of them will fetch the stack values from here. So that the stack they will get is a stack and there will be uh, another pool of defined as w, 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 which has a lot of the same values. So uh, on the top, the next to worker process. So, so in the next module, the worker process. I'm passing processor count. So, so the number of processors in the instance, in the next we have the most many worker threads in its engine app.conf file. So that is where my <coughs> server name is. And I'm calling it server. Those are the, my server name and I'm calling uh, it's my server of jack.com. Fast EJ type has been FPM socket. So you can have FPM, like in our logic we can have FPM socket or Unix socket or a no, PCP code or a balancer also. Then. We have a balancer and we use that. So we have a unique chat value like my simple host is for save dot chat dot entry. So that's a particular value which will be passed on a configuration file which is being used by because it needs to go get something from the slave. And then again the stack hash is being But for US I'm having a different, for that data center, I'm having a different value for a slave. So any instances which spawn up in that data center will, will hit that slave. And rest of them, or I can have, for each data center, I have kind of different YAML file which will assign that. This is the normal file, which has only this. <laughs> so, so, so all these values would be much more in the domain of an operations guy. So he would be much more concerned about how how I'm gonna be deploying my infrastructure. If if this particular application needs a bigger server, if on a bigger server. How much resources does this application have? If this and all that stuff. So it is much more. Till now, it's all being done for a at the what an operations guy would be have been like concerned about more than a dev guy. Next is like. <coughs> so this is our stack app. The next app that would have like done. So if you don't have, it, go download it and install it and do your. 
on your poster and have to do all this stuff. So, so, so when we deployed it, it was an app. So there was an app team working on it. They've been working very diligently. They've been working through them, a lot of them. And, and there, you, there was supposed to be a hitchhack.com placeholder site just telling about the hitchhack. And it's a simple static site. Nothing to do with it. Nothing. This was a configuration. In a production YAML file, I only had to put this hub and it was deployed. Jack server node, jack.enable.com, uh, server is true. There's a line missing, CL60, and a stack. So uh, I was also saying what stack it is. Like, it's, 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 I was defining it as Nginx static. So, Internal stacks like we have an Internet static or Apache static stack which will only deploy Apache on that server. If we have Internet PHP FPM stack which will have Internet PHP FPM installed on the server and then configured using that data from Hive. And then again Apache PHP, liquid PHP or Apache FPM stack which will then fetch the data from there and configure those. Again, attack. So that was specific to the project uh, production environment. So this was something common. So the tags, whatever the source was, this document group had was something slash, like it was the slash. Like anything in SVN and Kajak trunk was slash. By default, it was configured. Uh, the index file was index.html, simple static site. Stack, stack, the next static. That's the stack. And the people who are allowed to deploy this. So there's a group, dev, it's, it's allowed to deploy this. So this is what I have done, and that's what it done. The site is going to go live, the app is going to be accepted by iOS, and it's just been the plan. And then there's a lot of marketing, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's going to be a lot of in the channel they're going to talk about this so the people are going to be away. So there's going to be a lot of forward online marketing done at the channel level also. That, so, so this was what we <coughs> I'm home from 9 and having my dinner and they decide no, we don't want to call it jack.nv.com, uh, uh, we're going to call it w.kachak. Production Yaman, region 2. Change it to www.kachak.com and make the DNS changes, whatever. And on the same servers, puppet runs, fix it, and it's www.kachak.com. Okay, so everything is not such uh, popular or simple. So the app has something of a feature where you can you are able to share a photo. If you're sharing it through the social media, or you can share it with the app itself. When you share it through the app, the app sends you a URL which which you can forward to your friends. So somebody noted that the URL is a very obvious something as three dot aws dot bucket or something like that. And this is a, I mean, we should have a proper kajak.com URL. And the request goes to the app developers like, hey, we are not saving the files on our servers. We are just getting the files from the end. We are pushing it to the S3 bucket and we are passing. We are maintaining the which we are filing uploaded by the user. We are keeping that in our database and we are uploading and we are giving that link to the app. It has to be behind the jack. Now it, it goes to the website developers and says, hey, what site have you built? Can't you do this? Right, it was supposed to be a simple static site, like simple HTML, some JS files, and that's it. There's nothing right. So those guys start working on it. So now they now they change the stack. So now from an internet static site. Now this is what developers are doing. So we have this facility, they, they change the stack to the next PHP FPM. They change the repository because the trunk it was something else, they like they made a branch, they start doing the PHP stuff there. 
and they have a place in all kinds of subjects. So, we did ABC, we did it curl, and then later on they realized they meant JSON because they're getting the data in JSON, they want to do something, they're connected to the they, your app guys are using a, uh, using a Redis database, so they need to have the PHP Redis stuff installed. So, so these are the mod files which the developers, whatever the, the requirements are, they can just fill this up. And this is what we start. The app's gone live, everything is happening. Now somebody opens a site on a tablet. Again goes back to the devs, hey the site's not looking good on a tablet. And the site is being used by the, the app. I mean it's, 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 the users are gonna be on tablets, the users are gonna be on mobile. So fix that. On the same code, what these guys do, developers do, is they make a new directory mobile and they and then make one more at a more server, uh, it's not an alive, it's a, it's a different server configuration. And got exact.com, document would be some mobile, server would be some that's some sort of rules which you like, what's, what's the index, index file is going to be, what the PDFs are going to be, some, those, those are rules to find. They can use that or they can, if, if it's a, another magento site, server rules magento. So, so some sort of magento rules to be like. So this is what the m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.m.
on the same server, which was like configured to have a static server, static Nginx file, uh, static Nginx site, would now have PHP installed and FPM installed configured the way they want it to be. And they were doing all that stuff. So this is where they had this power to do it. And, and so this is just an example. It's not Like 
talked about it and then I just did it. Okay. Puppet is it and Puppet is going to be downloaded, start creating about it and that's it. I mean, because we had to do it, we have, I mean, I had to use something like it was going out of hand. Like, I mean, SSH on a for loop is not the way to go for that. It is like for 10, 20 servers, but after that, I mean, you want to lose your uh, sanity. It's not going to scale. So, so that's how I chose it. 